On November 9th, 1992, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, a boy was born to Anthony K. Williams Jr. and Stephanie Williams. Although he was born with a life-changing disorder, he would eventually pick up a passion that would go on to change his life even more. And in just over 12 years, he would affect the lives of over 10 million people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of... Corey Devontae Williams was born on November 9, 1992 to Anthony K. Williams Jr. and Stephanie Williams. His parents would later go on to have two more children, Aaliyah and Anthony. Although Corey was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, he was raised in Detroit. And while not much is known about his early years or his personal life today, this is known. He grew up in a house of Christian faith and he loves video games, namely the Super Nintendo when he was young. Corey has even told stories about how he would hide his Game Boy Advance from his dad when he went to bed at night, and he has pointed out Master Chief to be his favorite gaming character. His Christian faith has played a major role in his life as well. Throughout all of the playthroughs on his channel, I guarantee you that he mentions God, Jesus, or some other aspect of Christianity at least once or twice. And it is because of this Christian faith that he does not swear in his videos, and he claims not to swear in real life. Which for his career choices in the future is some really good foresight. Also I'm not going to be swearing in this video in honor of Corey Kenshin, let's get a poppy. Some other things that Corey would grow to like in his early Early years were drums, dancing, and shonen anime. Also, he has an extremely rare genetic disorder that would play another big role in his life, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is a video sharing website that was created in the mid 2000s by these three guys who don't matter. What does matter is that around this time, a 16 year old Corey was watching a YouTuber by the name of ND Titan Lady, or Natalie Duran. The content that Natalie was making was mostly vlogs or videos where she told stories about her own life. Corey enjoyed this content and one random day he thought to himself, hey I have some pretty funny stuff that happened to me in high school too, why can't I be a YouTuber? So from this thought, on April 26, 2009, Corey would create his own channel under the name of Corey X Kenshin. Corey because, well, I don't really know, X because putting X on anything makes it cooler, and Kenshin because he liked the character Kenshin Imura from the manga Samurai X. Also, he likes Samurai, and that word is going to be thrown around a lot, so I just thought I would mention it here. But anyway, Corey would upload his first video a month later in May. What's up, YouTube? Um, yeah. What up? It's, 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 gosh, sorry about that. It's been a question for me, um, why are girls so difficult? This video titled Girls in Particular was about how girls treat relationships as games and how they screw over guys' hearts for caring about them. His words, not mine. In my eyes, Girls in Particular is definitely a first video from the 2000s. It's very low quality and it ain't that funny today. However, I imagine that in 2009, this video was pretty solid. Two months and four uploads later, Corey would make his first full-fledged skit titled The Green Disney Hat of Happiness. And this video featured one of his best friends to this day, Terrence. This skit was partly inspired by Nigahiga and skits would be a mainstay on his channel for the rest of his career. After this, Corey would upload every once in a while and some of his videos would actually feature his other best friend, Brandon, who today streams on Twitch. Other notable events that occurred during this time were Corey destroying his balls, Some bullshit. Corey saying his first no-no word. Damn, wait. And Corey doing this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. 
Can most of us really say that we can do this with even just 10 subscribers? Yeah. Look at yourself. A year and four months after uploading his first video, Corey would attend Michigan State University and ultimately split off from his best friends. But they wouldn't be the only thing that he split off as unfortunately, or fortunately, he would cut off all of his hair and strive for an afro instead. So Corey would upload a few videos occasionally until he vanished for 8 months, came back for 2 videos, and then vanished again for all of 2012. He attributes this to all of his time being taken up in school, more specifically computer science and calculus too. Corey did come back in 2013, however a lot of his videos from this year are private, except for 2 of them. And those 2 videos are this one and his first actual gaming video. In his time suffering through Calculus 2 and Computer Science, Cora would actually watch gaming YouTubers such as Markiplier and Yami Match. And just like ND Titan Lady, these two would inspire Cory to play low budget horror games on his dinky laptop. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where Cory X Kenshin's career truly begins. The first formal gameplay was on a horror game called Whitefinger. Corey recorded this with Bandicam, but he used the Corey Kenshin logo that he got a few months earlier to block the watermark. It's really, really creepy. Oh my god! What the freak is going on? Oh my god! What the heck? The second game that he played was actually Happy Wheels, but about 37 seconds into the video, he says that he's playing Happy Wheels again, but it says Happy Wheels 1, I, I don't freaking know. Happy Wheels would be a mainstay on Corey's channel for the longest time, not forever, but it's probably his longest series. A third thing I want to mention is his first playthrough, which was Super Punch Out for the SNES. Now during this early portion of the True Beginnings era, Corey would mostly play RPG horror games and games that he could run on his laptop, and Battlefield 4 on his PS4. But this didn't stop Corey from uploading once or twice a day and being on that grind in general. I had no other way to say that, I'm sorry. And sometimes he would take a few days off, but nobody really cared enough to say anything. Yet. On February 23rd, 2014, Corey would take his first big step on YouTube and announce that he had a subscriber goal of 10,000. And while I don't know how many subscribers he had at the time, I do know that he only hit 2,000 a month later. My goal is 10,000. I know it's possible and I know that if I put in the right amount of work and dedication to it, eventually it'll happen. So we can see that this was a pretty hefty task for Corey Kenshin at the time, and to complete it, he would have to start getting serious. So that's why in the same video, he announced that he was going to be uploading twice a day, and that he wanted feedback from his subscribers on what to play. And this feedback part would also spark a more interactive bond with his subscribers, so keep that in mind as it will come back later. From there, Corey would keep on making content by playing the games mentioned before, and Flash games. He would even try new things like a Q&A and a highlight series. I really do recommend the highlights though, they offer the best gameplays and the best moments from each era, and they're like a window into that time frame or era. <laughs> Let's play! No! On May 4th, 2014, Corey acquired his legendary Astros that his mom bought for him. He would go on to wear these for the rest of his career for some reason. Maybe it was because he was inspired by Yami Max to do it, but whatever, his choice. And then right after that, he would create a new Q&A slash fan appreciation series called CKA Day, or Cory Kenshin Appreciation Day. In this series, he would shout out fans that would send him art and beats, and then right after that, he would do a Q&A. Following this, on June 21st, 2014, Cory would do his first live stream for charity, and the charity that he chose was Charity Water. In the stream, he managed to raise over a hundred dollars, four times what the actual goal was. And in my opinion, this is just the first showing of how kind the Samurai- I mean, Cory Kenshin subscribers are. May I also mention that he has streamed this on Twitch, a platform that he hasn't used in the past six years. God, this- this dude really has some good foresight. Also, remember that interactive audience thing I was talking about? Well, Corey randomly did this like zombie apocalypse help tape thingy where he would make videos of him being like the last survivor of a zombie apocalypse and he would have his fans send him in like the same types of videos. It all started. I uploaded my Corey X Kitchen Highlights 2 video. <sighs> 
this and many other types of videos would create a more interactive and intimate relationship between Corey and his audience, as I said before. So on July 31st of 2014, Corey would say his iconic phrase that he says at the end of all of his videos. Sis, this is Sam Rock. No, no, I'm not saying that. I am not saying that. Just, just roll the clip. Why don't you go ahead and Samurai slice that like button or something like that? I think I'm the black samurai, uh, <clears throat> Afro samurai. <clears throat> In this video, Corey would announce that he would allow his subscribers to pick his audience name and his new outro. The outro doesn't really matter as he would just cycle through them, but among the audience names, there were very many. Only one can make the cut. And what other name is as good as the Samurai? And brothers and sisters. Okay, personally, I can't even express how good that name is. All I can say is that it's one of the best YouTuber audience names on the platform. Brothers and Sisters is also a very good alternative name. But a few days later, he would confirm his new outro and audience name. And then he left for three days. A sign of times to come. Nah, in all seriousness, Corey just forgot his laptop charger when he went to his girlfriend's house. And we never got to see this supposed girlfriend, but none of that matters now. Because I have to talk about the game that changed Corey's life forever. Sup YouTube, what's going on? Corey Kinchin here and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy. <laughs> Yeah, I know that was cheap, but you gotta understand that everybody on the internet loved that jump scare when the game came out. So much so that a small 4,000 sub YouTuber like Corey Kenshin could gain a thousand subs off of him playing the first night for 15 minutes. So Corey would do what any broke middle class American would do and chase that bag! But for real though, in a matter of literally three days, Corey would bolt through 5,000, 6,000, and 7,000 subscribers. Two days later, he would hit 8,000 subscribers, and then 9,000 subs did the LOL funny Super Saiyan joke. Then, days later, he did it. He hit 10,000 subs, or Samurai as we're called. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the power that FNAF had at the time. It completely changed not only Corey's life, but thousands of other people's lives as well. For better and for worse. And Corey would play every game after FNAF 1, except for these ones. He would play fan games, he would run the series into the ground like everybody else, and eventually he would meet Scott Cawthon himself. I know it sounds weird for me to mention future events right now, but you gotta understand that FNAF had the biggest impact on Corey's channel, and his life in general. Moving away from that, I did miss one thing, and that was the first ankle breaker moment. Alright, you ready for them juke skills? Ooh, ho, ho, Barry Sanders! Mm. Actually, let's take a second to talk about some of Corey Kenshin's titles and names. The short name is just Corey, or alternatively, CXK, if you're feeling fancy. <laughs> you look like something! Some of the titles that Corey holds are The Ankle Breaker, The Shogun himself. Gigantes. And for a short time, The Chosen. Not The Chosen One, just The Chosen. I'm starting to think that you just don't understand something. They don't make them like they used to. I am cut from what a different that? cloth. I am a different breed. I am... The Chosen! <laughs> <laughs> what the freak you laughing at? You think this is funny? And I mean, what other title is there for a guy who doubled his subscriber count in a month? And two months later, Corey doubled his sub count again, partly because of FNAF 2. But yeah, that's it for the True Beginnings era. And by the end of the era, Corey had over 50,000 subscribers, a good number considering what was to come next. Alright, I'm now going to pick the best playthrough of the True Beginnings era. And for reference, these are the rules that I'm going by for picking the playthrough. The best playthrough in the True Beginnings era is Outlast, and it isn't that good. In fact, most of the playthroughs in this era are not that fun to watch. Now let me explain what I mean by this. It's not that they're bad, they're just kinda boring. But you can't really gripe on them that much because what do you expect from a YouTuber that's just beginning? 
So yeah, most of the playthroughs in this era are kinda bad, including the best one. But I have found something really special about them. I have found that if you are up really late at night and you play one of your favorite open world games and turn one of these playthroughs on, you will have an amazing experience. So I was playing Breath of the Wild at like 12 o'clock at night and then I turned on Evil Within 1 and for some reason it made the whole vibe better. I don't like using that word vibe, I think it's disgusting, but like that's all I can say. See even though these playthroughs are boring, they have the advantage of being chill as heck. Maybe you want to play some Fallen Order at 1 in the morning, put on some Cory Kenshin Outlast 1 to make you feel like you're actually doing something with your time. Finally, for the best singular gameplay, no collabs and no playthroughs, we have Orange Roulette. This one happens extremely early in the era, but it's surprisingly good for its time. And yeah, that's where Cory's career and Cory X Kenshin really began. Now obviously, this was when he was first really getting real on YouTube. It's in the later eras where he would really become a legend. And we all know, you can't just start something and then immediately become a legend like right after. You need some type of change, an in-between, maybe some sort of intermission. The beginning of this phase for Cory Kenshin starts with him going back to MSU campus in January of 2015. And just to brief you guys on Cory's college career, he's been going to college ever since 2009. It's just in the True Beginnings era, he found more effective ways to manage his time. Another new thing he would do is rebrand his Q&A series from CKA Day to Cory X Comments. Tap it him, Cory X <laughs> Now, this isn't official, but the reason I say this is because the next CKA day, and the final one, would come 5 months later in a completely different era. Meanwhile, Cory X Comments was basically almost a weekly series, and Cory even said himself that he didn't have time to do CKA days now that he was living in a dorm room. During this time, Cory would also meet his first samurai in person, and his name was Steven. <laughs> but wait a minute, let's backtrack to a week earlier. I'm going to PAX East? While going to PAX East did sound like a dream come true for Cory, he still had one simple problem. He didn't have enough money. The entire trip was $736 approximately, and since nobody in his personal life could pay for the entire cost, he turned to one reliable group of people, the Samurai. On February 4th, 2015, Cory announced to his subscribers that he would need $736 to go to PAX, and he would be accepting donations through a live stream. A live stream that didn't really matter because within a day of posting that video, the samurai had already raised $741. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the power that the samurai possess. I also find it hard to find like a kind and pure non-toxic fanbase like the samurai in today's YouTube world. And I'm not saying that the samurai aren't toxic at all, I mean, when you have a sub count of over 10 million, you're bound to get some oddballs at some point. And Cory has even addressed this. But if you look on the wider scale of what some other communities have done, the samurai are basically a godsend. This was in 2015 though, and in my eyes, that's when fan bases weren't as toxic as they were today. But whatever, the point is that the samurai are awesome, and Cory Kenshin gets to go to PAX now. Right off the bat, the first day at PAX East, what what was that? Cory would meet not only his inspiration, Yami Mash, but also Jacksepticeye, which he would flex for the rest of his career despite only getting a picture with him. Oh, y'all didn't know me and Jacksepticeye were best friends? Guys, he replied to my tweet. We're basically bros. Cory would also state that this event would give him a thirst to be a better YouTuber. Once again, his words, not mine. So in this act of stepping his game up essentially, on April 23rd, 2015, Cory announced to his fans that he was going to chase his big dream of being a professional YouTuber. Let's say it. I am leaving my university and I'm going to be doing YouTube full time for one year. And if he didn't have 150,000 subscribers in a year, he would quit YouTube indefinitely and go back to college. 
Now, this decision didn't really come just from the PAX thing. He actually realized that as he got better and better at YouTube, he wouldn't have time to do both it and college classes at the same time. He was also struggling at computer science and he started to dread it as YouTube became more and more fun. And he announced this in what was probably the most important Corey Kenshin video of all time. Or should I say was. Because within like a third of the time, he would reach his goal and start doing YouTube professionally. But he didn't do this in the intermission phase. Oh no, that time was over. To accomplish this, Corey had to leave behind old tropes, move into a new apartment, and move into a new age. And that age was the Silver Age. But wait a minute, let's talk about some playthroughs. Corey's best playthrough in this era was easily Dying Light. And might I say that this era has some of the best playthroughs. And that's largely because of the fact that these playthroughs are a mixture between the more chill and low-key playthroughs of the past and the more lit playthroughs of the future. Future. Lit. Is that, is that word still in circulation? Somebody please tell me. Unlike the Let's Plays in the last era, the Let's Plays in the intermission will actually have you listening to what's actually going on. But they're still not good enough to the point where you can actually like watch them watch them. Also, I find it nice that Corey has actually played all three of the Resident Evil remakes by complete chance. Corey's best singular gameplay of this era was actually Handless Millionaire. I feel that it perfectly captures the vibe of this era, and today he's an actual millionaire, so haha, <laughs> swear. Corey had 80,000 subscribers at the end of this era, and I really think that puts into perspective how big of a goal 150k was. Now, a real brainiac samurai would say that the Silver Age starts when Corey moves into his very own apartment, but nah. The Silver Age starts with this one little small game. Okay. That's right, people. The Silver Age starts with the classic playthrough of Geometry Dash. And I see Geometry Dash as a piece of the bigger change that was going on in Corey Kenshin's channel. In fact, if I had to sum up the Silver Age in a nutshell, it would be the end of the classic Corey Kenshin and the beginning of the modern one. I say this for multiple reasons, and the first one is because the playthroughs became more sporadic. For instance, instead of Dying Light Episode 1, Resident Evil Episode 4, and then Dying Light Episode 2, it would be Geometry Dash Episode 1, a couple of one-off videos, Yandere Episode 2, a couple of one-off videos, and then Geometry Dash Episode 2. Other big changes to the channel include the end of CKA Day, the last RPG horror playthroughs, and Corey's thumbnails become more descriptive. But what I see as the ending of the old Cory Kenshin is the leaving behind of the beanie. This thing had been with Cory since the very beginning, and one day he just stopped wearing it. I don't know in what specific video it was, but my best guess is this one. But who cares about that old thing, cause Cory just got a new thing. It's time for the samurai brother to awaken. Other notable events that occurred during this time were the invention of cooking with Kenshin. Cory X Cooking! And the creation of Cory's new PC. I would make a more big deal about how the samurai basically paid for half of the machine, but I think you get how much of a supportive force they are by now. When you do something for so long, you know, I have like over 800 videos. When you do something for that long and when it becomes like the way that you make your money, there are going to be times when you don't feel like doing it. As, as crazy as it is, there are times that I don't want to play video games. So after I'm already burnt out, how in the world am I supposed to set me tips going to get you to the Like you can't fake that. Like I have to be real with that, you know what I mean? And so I have to apologize. So in the beginning of the Silver Age, I listed all the changes that came with the end of the classic Cory Kenshin and the beginning of the modern Cory Kenshin. But there is one change that I didn't list that you should basically already know about, and that was the switch from hobby to full-time job. Now, towards the middle of the Silver Age, Cory started to get very inconsistent on his uploads, sometimes even taking week-long breaks where he doesn't even upload. So all of this eventually culminated into a video of him explaining why he would do this. In this video, Cory would come clean and say that he was dealing with issues of burnout on YouTube. 
He attributed this to his tiring editing process and how he didn't want to act like a fake zombie in front of the samurai. See, for the classic Cory Kenshin, YouTube was just a hobby that he could use as an escape from college. But for the modern Cory Kenshin, YouTube is a full-time job where he works alone and has no escape from. So with that little comparison, I think you can see how burnout could occur. These burnout problems, among others, would plague the modern Cory Kenshin for the rest of his career causing him to take long breaks without uploading, like the one we're about to get into now, where he took two months. Two months. Two months later, Cory would come back with a return video explaining why he was gone for that amount of time. Luckily, his sub count only went up during this time, but we'll get into why I think that happened later. But to put it shortly, Cory was basically scared of his job. There was actually a time that I hated I hated this chair because when I would edit, um, I would I would con I would pretty much construct mental chains around myself, like connected to this chair, and it's really weird. It might sound really funny and really weird to some people, but while I would be editing like something a little harder to edit, like Yandere, for example, I would feel like I was chained to my chair and I wouldn't be able to get up. So. Um, obviously there came a time where I would start to fear the chair and I wouldn't want to come to the chair because that means that I was going to be editing for six or seven hours and um, one day I just didn't come back to the chair. Um, it's the, my best way to do it. He would also attribute the two month break to his rapid success and how now he had 600,000 subscribers and how that put so much pressure on him. But it seemed like Corey got over this as for the next few days he was uploading consistently. Also this is where I became a Corey Kenshin fan so expect way more personal opinions. So yeah Corey's back to uploading consistently again, he moved into a new apartment and now he seems like he's in the prime of his career. Man I'm hype, I'm hype for this new age of Corey X. So, uh, this is my car getting towed. After a long, tiring day at the amusement park with his best friend, Corey would fall asleep at the wheel, causing him to accidentally run into a semi-truck in an accident that should have killed both him and his best friend Brandon. And somehow, both of them made it out without a scratch, but the car was totaled though. But like a true legend, well, not even like a true legend, like a truly responsible person who cares about their audience, Corey turned this experience into a freaking PSA. He even put facts about sleeping when you're drowsy in the description. Corey didn't upload for another two months after making this video for good reason, obviously. And then he dropped a Pokemon Go video like nothing happened, as he mentions in the video after this Pokemon Go video, where he makes an entire diss track about himself and roasts himself for being basically gone for four months. Mad stuff, I know, but my thing is that you literally have to have the most dedication to your job and your fans if you got into a life-threatening car crash, left your audience for only two months, which I would understand leaving for like eight, I mean they literally should have died, came back, made a skit slash diss track on yourself, and took all accountability for your actions. From my perspective, it is extremely hard to find another large YouTuber or content creator who can do all of those things and still have accountability and have true integrity. I mean, dang, some of them wouldn't even take full responsibility, let alone apologize. And you know, I think that's one reason why people like Cory Kenshin. He's just responsible. Like, if he does something bad, he'll own up to it. He'll actually take responsibility. However, I ain't done praising this man yet. Another thing I want to praise Cory for is not making false promises. And this is a problem that many, many content creators have fallen into. A lot of the times, YouTubers say that they're going to do one thing, and then they simply just don't do it for various reasons. And since Corey has done this in the past, he decided to bite the bullet and say that if he can't upload every day, then he won't. We're gonna change the way things are a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna be uh, an everyday upload channel, because I, I really do want to be, but um, 
my life has been pretty pretty strange right now um so now i like this approach because at least he's being honest he accepted that he can't upload every day and to me that's just better than lying or uploading every day successfully and making your mood worse therefore making your content worse and i just realized that cory does both of these things in the future but for a while he sticks to the promise that he made in this video but overall, I think this video is pretty telling of how good Cory is at handling the serious side of being a content creator. Also, he reveals his life-changing bodily disorder in this video, but we'll get into that later, because right now, I have to go over the golden age of Cory X Kenji! So I know what a lot of you people are thinking, uh, you just made this the golden age because this is when you started watching- No, 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 I didn't do that. I'll tell you right now, I do not have a single ounce of bias in me. To show you that I'm not biased and that this era is the true golden age of Cory Kenshin, we're gonna play a little game. I bet you that at least 10 videos that I list will make you laugh at least once. And if you laugh, you have to subscribe to me. Yeah, I'm taking all the credit. So let's just start with a simple list. Bam! First episode of Batman, the best episode of Deep Web, best episode of Mortal Kombat, meets Dash at E3, the first in all episodes of Sneak Thief in this era, most iconic Cinematica episode, and they left for some random reason. But then, we got the funniest 2K gameplay on the platform. Then right after that, we got the funniest episode of Guts and Glory, For Honor, meets Scott Coughlin at a freaking Fright Dome, first Hello Neighbor episode, Sister Location playthrough, he got a VR, best episode of Watch Dogs, his birthday happened, one of his most popular videos, he meets Kevin Hart. 1 million samurai was insane to me at the time. I remember back in 2016, a lot of the people that I watched had over 3 million subs, but I didn't really have as much as a strong connection with them as I did with Cory Kenshin. Oh baby it's time. Those are just completely random words to a lot of people, but because Cory said them when he hit the milestone, they're engraved in my head. We work so hard, it's time. Oh baby it's time. Oh baby it's time! Oh baby it's time! Oh baby it's time! And can I mention, I wasn't even there while he was saying them because fifth grader me didn't want to do his freaking homework, so I got there when he was calling Dashy. And even just replaying the stream, I felt all the hype and the energy. And I hate using energy because what does that even mean? This moment is so important to the Cory Kenshin channel and it's so impactful to me and a lot of the people that were in the stream probably. I'm so thankful for this moment being caught in a live stream because it's just a raw reaction. You know, most YouTubers make a video saying thank you and doing something really cool, but having this live stream, this raw reaction, to me is way better than just saying thank you and doing something nice. Now, while I don't want to yell into your ears again about how good the Golden Age is, we still have stuff to go over. Hilarious Mario run and Friday the 13th gameplays. He left for four weeks and then came back with a fire cooking with Kenshin video. The best episode of G-Dash with a broke hand, ironically. Hand broke, but she still call me poppy. Look at her one time and I know she's my mommy. Right after that, the best RE7 episode. A couple of animations, Cory X comments, and Cory X highlights. Following this, he took a month break, but then he returned with the funniest collab with Mavitak. Like seriously guys, go watch this, you will be dying laughing. But he also returned with a new house and more teeth. Huh? Well, I guess it's time to get into that third thing I mentioned at the first part of the video. Let's talk about genetic disorders! Cory was born with a rare genetic disorder called ectodermal dysplasia, and he inherited this from his father. I have a genetic disorder, it's called ectodermal dysplasia, and um, in the entire world of 7 billion people over that now, about only 7,000 people on screen, I'm dividing that so you can see the probability of you having this. Um, only 7,000 people have been diagnosed 
in the entire world. So, you know, I'm one of the unlucky 7,000. Thanks, God. You know, it's, it's cool, though. Basically, Cory has barely any hair anywhere on his body, and he has eight less teeth than the average person does. He was actually bullied for this, and he states that sixth grade was the hardest year for him because of bullying. Corey would eventually get braces, but because his family were going through financial problems at the time, he couldn't continue his treatment. But years later, because of YouTube money, he was able to get Invisalign and finally got a full set of teeth on the top of his mouth. Now, this ectodermal dysplasia thing does affect Corey's life in like the third biggest way, but while writing this video, I realized that it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of Corey's YouTube life because Corey barely ever mentions it before and after he made his video on it. And even before he made the video about ED, his fans didn't really, like, we didn't really care. I mean, yeah, we care, but it was just always like, okay, that's what Corey's teeth look like, so what, who cares? But all that negativity that Corey had to go through regarding his teeth pales in comparison to all the positivity that he has spread throughout his last 12 years on YouTube. But that's just how I see it, and I really have no place to speak on what Corey was going through when he was getting bullied. About the video itself though, I have to give massive props to Corey for revealing something so personal. You really have to have a lot of trust in your audience to say something like this and make a whole video about it. Taught a life lesson at the end of the video as well, and that was to not let your insecurities or anybody else dictate your life. And that's a real, real life lesson right there. Nevertheless, we should forget about all that sad sack stuff right now because we are about to get into a banger of an era after I talk about Corey's best playthrough, best gameplay, and his sub count from the Golden Age. Corey's sub count by the end of the Golden Age was over 1 million, and if that's too broad for you, I don't care. Corey's best playthrough is either Resident Evil 7 or FNAF 3. That's how good these playthroughs are. I can't even pick one. RE7 because it's just downright hilarious. Guys. Hit the like button if that was too easy. You, you know how like YouTubers like ask for likes. Like, I'm getting desperate. And Fnac 3 because it's like the playthroughs in the intermission era. It's nice to vibe to, but at some points it'll actually have you watching. And the moments that you're watching are even better because Corey is better at commentating. And finally, Corey's best singular gameplay is Steep because it's literally just hilarious. Is that a ramp? Are we killing that? Woo! What? Bruh. That was the weakest freaking jump I've ever- Okay. Spaghetti! Spaghetti! Bud Sunday Pop-Tarts are the best ones. Fight me if you disagree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice beat, huh? I thought so too. Shout out to Cryptic. Hey, listen. Yeah. Oh, you thought it couldn't get no better? Bro, you slipping. Who you thought this was? Put yourself together. Man, just listen. Stay wrecking scrubs. GG made every endeavor's a dub till I try to get a date. Wow. Now, I call it the Platinum Age because simply nothing was holding Cory back anymore. He had revealed his big secret, and I think that from the end of April 2017 to the beginning of January 2018, we see a Corey Kenshin who is in his complete element. Also, he bought a new house so he can do more stuff than he could do in an apartment. In this house tour video, he claimed many times that it was his final return to YouTube. <laughs> And through the rest of this era, he would be very inconsistent in his uploads. But to be honest with you, I don't really care because the uploads in this era are amazing. And I know I use that word a lot, but for real, I mean like spectacular, super amazing, duper spe Spider-Man levels. Finding Bigfoot, Crash Bandicoot, Rabbits, Dragon Ball. Oh, one hit, come here, man! Let's go! Let's go! In the playthroughs in this era, it's just stacked. Injustice 2, Kindergarten, Duck Season, Cuphead, White Day, Fred vs. Fright, Little Nightmares, Outlast 2, all of these freaking amazing ones. Also, a quick editor's note, uh, he finished all of these playthroughs, and if you didn't know, today it's very rare for him to finish one one singular playthrough that, that that's how good this era was 
and awesome thing about all of these playthroughs as well is that each episode could be its own thing. I feel like if you watched a single episode of Injustice 2 for example, you would still like it. You don't have to watch any other episode to enjoy it. During this time, Corey started to ride big trends as well. He made some try not to laughs, he made a 3am challenge before it was completely evil, and he made a diss track on things he doesn't like. Phase two, we coming through, your mama said clean up your room, but ma she interrupts, she grabbed the belt, she say it's coming soon, so then you go back to your room, but first you go grab the vacuum, know what, it's time to go through, and I gotta hit mine with a bare knuckle. And in another amazing act of foresight, he deflected all K-pop stands before they were even prominent in a 10 second clip. I see why teenage girls get into this. Like I am a grown man. And like, I'm not saying he cute or nothing. <laughs> Now, writing trends isn't a new thing for Corey, because he's been doing it for basically his entire career. He just did it in more subtle ways than other YouTubers, and besides Five Nights at Freddy's, he never really got to a point where he was beating a dead horse. And by doing some hard work and riding trends a little, he would eventually reach 2 million subscribers within a year. Not as impactful as 1 mil, but it was still a good time to be a samurai. And speaking of samurai, Cory would have the honor to go to his first Make-A-Wish for a child with cancer named Shailene. And as he would grow in subscribers, he would do many many more of these. Cory's sub count by the end of this era was approximately 2,370,380. His best gameplay in the Platinum Age was COD World War II. Corey's energetic personality and energetic edits clash really well with COD's very intense gameplay. While I have Kindergarten marked down as the best playthrough in the Platinum Age, all of the playthroughs in this era are amazing. Go watch all of them. I was going to make a big deal out of this, but I realized I only needed a few sentences to say this. 2017 is the best year of Corey X Kenshin by far. Inconsistencies and all. This year was when Cory Kenshin peaked, and Frick the Golden Age and Frick the Platinum Age, those are just arbitrary terms that I made up. Everything that came after this year wasn't as good, but it was still amazing, don't get me wrong. Actually, we'll talk about this later, cause y'all will see what I mean when we get caught up with the timeline. But for now, I'm hyped for 2018. Cory knows the mistakes that he made in the past, nothing's holding him back anymore, and he's the funniest and the most entertaining he's ever been. All he has to do now is stay consistent. Okay, he's doing pretty well. He missed a few days, but he's still staying somewhat consistent. Nice. Okay, missed a day, but it's just one day. One day. One day. Okay, a week. Whatever, it's nothing. <laughs> Five weeks? Come on, guys. He, he He's done something similar to this before. He's probably going to come back tomorrow. I, I I don't even I, I don't even It's been four months and in this span of time I have finally created a Twitter to see what's going on on Cory Kenshin's channel in the future if there ever was going to be a future ever again Oh my god Corey returned from his first full-length four-month break on May 20th, 2018, first with a tweet and then with a live stream. In both of these posts, Corey explained how he looked back at all of his broken promises and realized that he hasn't been at 100% in a long time, so that's why he took the four-month break. He also realized that he hadn't been looking at himself as a person that much, so yeah, that's another reason. So y'all know that I think that the 100% thing is cap. All the videos in the Golden Age and the Platinum Age are mini masterpieces. And if Cory was telling the truth and the Golden Age and the Platinum Age weren't him at 100%, then I fear what is. But after he returns, nothing really happens. He just kind of does his thing consistently and eventually he hits 3 million subscribers. <laughs> then 7 months later, he would hit 4 million subs. 
and then a few months after that, he would hit 5 million. <laughs> yeah. And the reason I'm not making a big deal out of these is because, guys, we're about to start blowing through millions here. In fact, in my opinion, this is when Corey Kenshin started to get mainstream. The reason I say this is because Corey's sub growth in these last two eras is five times larger than his entire career up to the end of the Platinum Age. Subscribers aren't everything, as we'll see in the last part of this video, but you still have to recognize that Corey is way immensely more popular than he was in the 1 mil, 2 mil days. Around this time, Corey would also create his Spooky Scary Sunday series, a series where the samurai get together as a community and watch scary videos sent in by the samurai via Twitter using the hashtag Spooky Scary Sunday. And if your video gets picked, you get a freaking shout out, dude! I thought that Spooky Scary Sunday was a really good idea, and I still do, but over time, I started to realize that dedicating a whole day to a very specific video is not really what I like, personally. But hey, those videos were 30 to 40 minutes of Corey Kenshin content every week, until they weren't, and it started getting very annoying how inconsistent it was. Moving past that, I have to get to the most important part of this era, the 100 day streak. During 2019, Corey would actually start to create a streak of daily uploads. This streak was also saved many times by Corey uploading 30 second videos of him explaining why there wasn't a regular video that day. And we will all remember day 51, the code red of the entire streak, and then the code orange, and then the code dot 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 dot. Earlier I said that Corey's content in these last two eras wasn't as good as the golden and platinum ages, so this next section is going to tie into what I mean by that. So on December 20th, 2018, Corey uploaded a video where he claimed that his channel was dead. Now the channel wasn't actually dead, it was doing better than ever, but it was dead in his eyes because of the 4 month break. Not only that, but he also claimed that his goal for 2019 was to upload 242 videos. 242. I'm shooting for over 242 videos in 2019. Now what that would translate to is out of every three days, there would be two days where I uploaded. That's just my goal. I ain't saying that's what's gonna happen. That's what I'm goal. That's what my goal is. That's what I'm trying to do. And in the video after this, like a month later, Corey claimed that another goal of his for 2019 was consistency. He also talked a lot about how in this era he was going to have new merch and how he was going to finish all of his games. Corey made more bold claims and promises than he did in any other era, and ironically, he failed at all of them. First, there was no merch drop of 2019 at all. Second, he wouldn't finish Mortal Kombat, Tabs, Dead Rising, Ultimate Custom Night, and Spider-Man 2018 in this era. And finally, he couldn't reach his goal of 242 videos of 2019. Corey uploaded just under half of that, at 120 videos. But one thing he did do though is complete a pointless 100 day streak. Why did he do this? He didn't have to do the streak. His goal was 242 videos out of a year. And if you remember the clip that I showed you earlier, that's two videos every three days. And people are gonna say, well, didn't he like miss a month already? Well, that's what a double upload card is for. It's not just that the streak was pointless, it's the fact that we all know that Corey Kenshin gets burned out easily, very easily, a lot. a lot. And the streak only made this worse. Much, much worse, but we'll get to that in a second. Another reason why the 100 day streak sucks is because of these low budget $1 horror games. In these videos, Corey claims that there's nothing to play, so he just bought the cheapest games on Steam, even though there are plenty of games with playthroughs that he still hasn't finished. So we can come to the conclusion that Corey is either lazy or the arbitrary 100 day streak was putting a strain on his content making capabilities. Yeah. Now I'm not saying that Corey has to play games and finish them all the time for his content to be good. No, not at all. In fact, I really like the videos where a comedic YouTuber will just sit down and talk about something. I think that that shows a different, more mature side of the creator that you don't get to see all the time. But at the end of the day, Corey is still a gaming YouTuber, and I think I would much rather see him uploading, finishing, and enjoying games three days a week than struggling to keep a daily upload schedule while he doesn't even finish games, and the games that he does play are trash. What I'm trying to get across here is that I don't care for Corey's daily upload type of schedule. Yeah, it would be cool if he could daily upload, but he can't. Well, he could, but 
we've seen how bad that goes. And going back to the 242 uploads thing, I don't really care about that either. Corey could upload three days a week, twice a week, or even once a week. I would still be happy. And the reason I'm saying I all the time is because it's my freaking video. All this 100 day streak nonsense and this talk about how he needs to prove himself. No. No, he doesn't. <laughs> because after these, two, actually, no, after this banger of a year, I think that he doesn't need to prove himself at all. Now, this is just my opinion, obviously, and this is how I see it, and I'll admit, there are probably a multitude of reasons why Corey's content wasn't as good as it was in 2017. Who knows, maybe he didn't finish those games because they weren't popular at the time. Or maybe his content wasn't as good because of the death of his aunt a few months earlier, which is an actual, like, that's an actual legitimate reason, and I'm sorry if I offended Corey for not knowing what I'm talking about. But what I do know is what happens next only adds to my case that the 100 day streak is really dumb. And it put a strain on not only Corey's content making capabilities, but his mental health as well. See, right after Corey uploaded his video remarking his 100 day streak, he took a month off. Then he uploaded a video, took a two week break, and uploaded two more videos, but one of them was actually really important. RIP Etika. In this video, Corey not only mourned for Etika, but he understood and told his audience the message that Etika was trying to get across. Social media can have a dangerous effect on people, and as we'll see in a second, it had a dangerous effect on Corey as well. Corey also took a second to preach to his fellow YouTubers about not always being on social media all the time. And I guess he decided to take his own advice because one video later, Corey left for nine months. Now, nine months is a long time, but considering what he talked about in the Etika video, I bet it really helped Corey get back into a better mental state. But back to the actual content in the era, I know I got super harsh when I was talking about it, but to be honest with you, nothing in the era, no, no content in the era was actually bad. In fact, none of Corey Kenshin's content is anywhere near bad. It's just that in my personal opinion, in this era, the content doesn't live up to the standards that were made in the golden and platinum ages. I'm not gonna play the whole Corey Kenshin fan who's all optimistic and then something happens to Corey where he has to take a break. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Not just because the joke is getting old, but because that's how I was this time around. You know me, OG Corey Kenshin fan. I had already been through a four month bull crappage. So instead of just watching his videos on repeat like I did for those four months, I was like, I uh, know, I'm gonna expand my horizons and go watch Berlizzi instead. And all I watched for the rest of that year was easy gang content. I think I lucked out too because I started watching during the EGHQ days. But that is a video for another day. The point is that over time, I started to forget about Corey Kenshin more and more. I never unsubbed because, I, I mean, he was my favorite YouTuber, I didn't really feel like I could. And even today, I still feel like I can't, but whatever, that's my story. Let's see what actually happened to Corey's channel in between these 9 months. Well, for starters, and probably the most important thing that happened during these 9 months, is that he hit 5 million subscribers while not even uploading. And Corey eventually surpassed Dashi in subscribers while Dashi was uploading. And that's not any flack to Dashi or anything, I think he's an amazing content creator in his own right. I don't like him over Corey Kenshin, it was just at the time, I never thought he would have surpassed Dashi in subscribers, even while he was uploading. In fact, I remember saying stuff like this to myself all the time, oh, Corey is my favorite YouTuber, but he'll never surpass Game Grumps or Dashi in subscribers. I know not everything is about numbers, but the fact that he surpassed Dashi without even uploading suggests that Corey's content is good no matter when you watch it. But I'll talk about that later, and I know I keep saying that, but this time, I promise. Corey's sub count by the end of this era, before the 9 months, was somewhere under 4.5 million. His best singular gameplay was definitely better to upload, solely for the freestyle in the beginning. <laughs> Listen, yeah, uh, okay, number one, let's get it, uh, look at this cue ball, looking like he about to kill me, hey y'all. I ain't trying to mess with you, man. I'm just playing. Let me hop in a whip, man. I'm just saying. Oh, oh. <laughs> and Corey's best playthrough in this era was definitely Resident Evil 2 Remake version. 
This series is fire and it's a long watch too, and by watch I actually mean you can watch the thing and have a good time. But then, one day in 2020, when the world needed him most, he obviously came back. I mean, what did you think was going to happen? The comeback! What? Now, during this unfathomably long break, Corey didn't just do nothing. He actually did like three make-a-wishes. He went to Japan and did some really sus things. And he took his family places. So as is the regular return routine, Corey would upload a video explaining why he was gone, and then he would play like popular indie games at the time. And he would actually be very consistent with his uploads, uploading once a day, twice a day, or every other day. But by now, we all know, what goes around, comes around. I don't know if that made any sense or not. But with every Corey Kenshin return, another break follows. And that's the biggest problem with this era as a whole. It, the, con the level of content is better than the last era, but Corey just takes too much, well, too much, too long of breaks. I don't know how to say it. Let, I'll let Corey describe it for you. What's your normal schedule? That's my normal schedule. Um, yeah. Go hard for three weeks, then leave for a month. <laughs> <laughs> He's not lying. Now, this is not hyperbole because in this singular era that has only lasted for about a year, he has done this three times. But to be fair, the one that's going on right now, or as I was writing this video, Corey is probably helping his mom upkeep her new nail salon, which he paid for in full, almost. I think. Because now, Corey's estimated net worth is over 1 million, or 12 million if you're not really feeling smart that day. Right after Corey's first two month break in this era, he dropped new merch, which he hadn't done in over 5 years. I bought this merch day one, and while this statement will ruin my social life, I am proud to have the privilege to wear some Corey X Kenshin gear. However, this merch drop wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, as some samurai would get ripped off by these scam websites called Motif and T-Chip. And after a few days of shaking his fists at them, Corey would finally take action by making a video exposing their scamming schemes and threatening legal action. And this actually worked, as a few days later, Motif and T-Chip would remove Corey's merch from their websites. A month later, in his Cooking with Kenshin 7 million subscribers special, Corey made a striking statement. I guess now is as good as time as any. When we reach 10 million, if we reach 10 million, I will be announcing my retirement from YouTube. That's right, guys. Okay, so Corey is inevitably going to retire. Confirm. But what is he really saying here? See, most of the samurai and the internet in general think that Corey is just gonna stop at 10 mil. Now, the reason most people think this is because our brains are getting scrambled by 5G. That's right, people. I don't care if this is an old joke or an old meme or anything. It, it's just true. And the only reason I know this is because I'm not even on the planet right now. Y'all see my PFP? Y'all know where I be. Uh, huh? <laughs> So since I'm not even on this rock that we call dirt, I can properly decipher what he's really saying in this clip. Now, my free thinker and intellectual army behind me has already figured out what this means. Corey clearly states that he is going to be announcing his retirement at 10 million subscribers, not retiring. All right, but in all seriousness, do I really think that Corey is going to retire at 10 million subscribers? No. I actually want to believe that this is true and that he's just going to announce when he's going to retire. And the reason I say this is because it would be really sucky if he just uploaded a video at 10 million saying thank you. Because he hasn't even uploaded a video since he hit 9 million. So you may as well have just retired there. And this isn't just me saying, oh, I don't want Corey to retire at all. No, later in the video, we're going to get into why I think he deserves to retire and why that would be better for him. It's just that in my opinion, I don't want to see Corey's career end on such a whimper like that. Through all the things that he's been through, through all the people that he made happy, he's just gonna upload a video and then head out? Like that's it? But whatever, the decision isn't in my hands at all and he can do whatever the frick he wants to. 
Some other notable things that happened in this era was the second merch drop for Christmas. And of course, I got it day one. I got a t-shirt that I lost two months ago and a necklace that I broke two weeks ago. Another notable event that happened was the first collab with Berlizzi. And as a fan of both of these dudes, I'll say that it was amazing to see. And the fact that they had been acknowledging each other for years only made this more hype. The last notable thing to mention in this era was the charity live stream, something which he hadn't done in over 5 years. In this stream, he managed to raise over $300,000. Most of this was because of the samurai, but other creators joined in too. But the most important thing is that Cory was able to get clean water to over 7,500 people in Mali, if my math is correct. And there's not really much to say after that except for he uploaded the worst video on his channel, and his last video to date was uploaded on March 7th, 2021. In this era, Cory's best playthrough was Ghost of Tsushima. It's just a solid playthrough that you can watch anytime. His best gameplay, in my opinion, is Crash 4. <laughs> Dang, this man can turn on a dime, look at this! You know what kind of shoes you need to be able to do that? And his sub count by the time I'm recording this video is 9.78 million. Alright, now we're done with the main timeline of Cory X Kenshin, and we can proceed with the retrospective, the criticisms, and the reason the video is titled what it is. But before we do that, let's check out some cool facts about Cory X Kenshin. Uh, he's a Scorpio. Yeah. So first, in this retrospective, I would like to say that this is obviously not a full summary of Cory X Kenshin's career. I skimmed over a bunch of stuff like in the True Beginnings era when Cory created a series called Slicing with the Samurai where he would play with smaller YouTubers that happened to be his subscribers. And in his first video, he would actually meet one of his best YouTube friends to this day. Another thing I skimmed over was when he did this in the Faithful Comeback era. I'm in such a good mood. Hey, Berlizzi. This one for you, baby. Wow, I guess it just runs in the community. So yeah, there are many other golden moments in Cory Kenshin's career that I haven't mentioned. But speaking of his career, why do I like Cory Kenshin? Well, when I was younger, unmistakably, I was only there for the jokes. And let me tell y'all, this man did not miss at all. And I think you can mostly attribute this to his edits because his commentary is... However, over time, after the One Mil Samurai Special and the Ectodermal Displacia video, I started to care about him more as a person. And as I grew up and learned more things, his content and his comedy didn't really evolve, it's just that I started to get more out of it. Another reason I like Cory Kenshin so much is because he's just so inspirational. One of the main lessons that he always tells his fans is to never give up. I just want to say that you can do anything, okay? I don't care how cliche I sound right now. I, I don't care because I am living proof of that. Corey's story is just so inspiring and statements like that definitely got me through making this video. On the contrary though, now that I am older, I can see the over exaggerated reactions that Corey gives. And this leads perfectly into my next section, the criticisms. Now, starting off with my own criticism, we have the over-exaggerated reactions. OH MY GOD! Really? You've been doing this your entire career and that scared you? Now, I know to a certain extent, every YouTuber is fake, and I'm not saying that Corey is just completely faking his personality. No, that's I'm not saying that at all. It's just that, at times, I don't feel like Corey is actually reacting genuinely. Now, sometimes this actually works to his favor, like in this clip. Hey, I lasted till one when everybody turned on. What you gotta say about that? But other times it can go like this. I just. Oh! <laughs> 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 
Oh! Wow, a quick fade in shot. So scary. I would also like to note that I have noticed this more in the past two eras than in any other. But wait a minute, what if Cory is just a pansy? You're telling me that Cory has played these games for his entire career and he is still jumping back in his chair from a slow fade in shot. But wait again, you're just saying that it was in the last two eras because you're just biased for the golden and platinum age. Well, I wasn't even around Cory's channel for the true beginnings and the intermission, and I, I don't know, his reaction seemed genuine there. But wait a third time, you're probably just saying this because you're older and more aware of the lucrative and underhanded practices of being a YouTuber. Alright, to be honest with you, I can't argue with that one, so whatever, next criticism. Alright, so again, let's talk about Cory leaving at 10 million subscribers. There are many samurai that are triggered at the fact that Cory has decided to retire at 10 million subscribers. And this is a good thing, they enjoy Cory's content so much that they hate to see him go. The problem here is that they don't really understand why he wants to go and why he deserves the right to go. And to answer this question, we only have to look at what a normal Geometry Dash episode is for Cory. So let's say that Cory wakes up at 11 in the morning, and it takes him an hour to do his toiletries, so he starts recording at 12. By the way, a lot of YouTubers, including Cory, record their videos way earlier in the morning, like at 2 or 3, so they can get their videos out earlier, and I'm just using an example from the 2 million subscriber video. So at 12, Cory sits down and plays Geometry Dash, an extremely difficult game. And he has stated before that Geometry Dash episodes usually take him like two hours of recording. Every time I record Geometry Dash, I know I'm gonna be at my computer for at least two hours. To put that into perspective, that's two hours of sitting in a chair, having high concentration, and trying to make good commentary followed by another three hours of cutting out most of that good commentary and condensing it into a six to 16 minute video. And this next three hours isn't just fun and games. You're basically locked in a room where you have to stare at a screen for the next three hours, and it's not like school where you can just like not do anything until the next class, like no. I've edited before and you really do have to put a lot of work and time into even just the trashiest videos like my other ones. And guess what, all my videos have a script, all of my videos are planned, and I already have a clear vision of what I want them to be. So I can't even imagine the decision making process that Corey has to go through when he decides which pieces of commentary to keep in, and which pieces of commentary to cut out. But wait a second, I hear you saying. Cory has the same job as all these other YouTubers, so why does he take longer? Well, that's because of two reasons. One, those other YouTubers probably have separate people as editors like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, or Berlizzi. Or two, those YouTubers focus more on commentary like 8-Bit Ryan, Cub Scouts, or The Rad Brad. Since Cory's commentary is pretty dry and he focuses more on edits, we'll put him in category 1. So this means that Cory is basically doing a two-man job, which explains the inconsistencies in uploads. And when he has inconsistencies in his uploads, like let's say he takes a month off or something, the pressure from the fans builds. Not only that, but the stress of coming back builds as well. He also doesn't want to come back acting fake and ingenuine, so he takes his time, letting the pressure and the stress build even more. But luckily, when he finally does come back, he comes back to a community that has grown even larger and has his back. But he ultimately does come back more inconsistent, and the breaks keep getting longer as well. And now you're probably saying, wait, why doesn't Cory just get an editor? Well, in this video when he Googles himself, he stated, I've had a few people, you know, ask me, do they want to edit for me? And like, no disrespect, you know, no shots at anybody to have editors. Because I understand, like, once you start getting high up, you start, I don't know why all these YouTubers coming out with books. They going on tour. They, do, they like rock stars now. They can't be at home, like, editing videos every day like us little peasants. But, you know, I've had to decline the people that have asked to edit for me because... I, I don't feel like anybody can edit like me, all right? I'm not, that's not being boastful. Like, I just got my own Cory Kenshin flavor. Like, I, I, I add the meme here. Or I get serious here. Like, somebody's gonna get in here and, like, they're gonna think that they can edit like me. And maybe, maybe some people can, okay? I'm not saying nobody can edit like me. 
I just got my own flavor. It's also not just editing. I brought up a clip earlier where Corey explains how playing games as a job has negatively affected him. Now imagine doing all of that, all of what I just described, the burnt out stuff and the two man job stuff. I imagine all of that and doing it for seven years all by yourself with nobody to live with you and nobody to help you so now i hope you understand why cory wants to and deserves the right to retire and i'm not saying that it's the fans fault for building up the pressure well it is but that's just what happens when you have a fan base that cares about your content so much and i don't think it's cory's fault either he just has a very mentally taxing job and even if he got an editor i don't think that his videos would be that funny like think about it, his videos are so amazing because they are made in his complete image. You now have permission to unsubscribe for my <laughs> And nobody else gets in the way of that. And if he had an editor, no matter how good they would be, his videos just wouldn't be the same. I did go a little bit off script there, but whatever. Let's just go to the next criticism. Lying! Yeah! Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, I just farted. <laughs> This is actually a valid piece of criticism. Corey does lie a lot, and by lie, I mean break promises and not follow up on some statements. But he isn't a complete liar, and for all I know, his content isn't really affected by these lies. Like, if you look past these lies and see how good his content really is, you really won't notice it that much. So that was my best rebuttal to this criticism, and now we can move on to the reason the video is titled what it is. So what does unknown legend mean? Well, to put it simply, in my eyes, Corey X Kenshin is an unknown legend, obviously. Now this ties into a few concepts, and the first is how he doesn't swear, or his humor in general. Not only is not swearing an amazing trait to have on YouTube these days, it makes Corey unique. Among YouTube gaming, it's very hard to find creators that don't swear, but also make actual funny content, and not just content for kids. Not swearing as a limitation can also open paths to new, more creative comedy, instead of just throwing the F word around all the time. I think people should respect him more for not swearing as well. He started gaming in 2014, and at the time, people were saying whatever they wanted to, but he stuck to his guns and didn't swear. You definitely have to give him props for that, and that's one reason why I think he's a legend. The second thing that makes Corey both unknown and a legend is the lack of drama and controversies. So what do I mean by drama? Well, I'll tell you right now that I'm not talking about the Google definition. I'm talking about YouTuber drama. Cringy tweets, expose videos, and maybe even diss tracks back in the day. And I'll tell all y'all again that Corey hasn't even gotten into a single situation like this. By the way, long breaks and personal stuff doesn't count. Neither does the T-chip and motif thing because he kind of just sued them behind the scenes. Now, drama on YouTube is pretty much inevitable. Once you start to go up into even just the 100,000 sub range, you can start to encounter it, or it will start encountering you for no reason. But somehow, Corey has managed to avoid this for let's just say, 5 years. He hasn't had beef with any other YouTuber, he hasn't been called out for committing a crime, and he hasn't been cancelled in even just a minor way, to my knowledge. But with reverse psychology and this video, that might change. While there is hate around Corey's name, he never addresses this, or he does, but he just addresses it like generally. He'll give very general statements like, oh my haters said I couldn't do it, but I did it now, stuff like that, you know? But keep in mind, Corey isn't one of those kids channels that just act completely oblivious to the YouTube landscape around them. Every once in a while, he will talk about a controversy that is going on, but to steer clear of any hate from this controversy, he will never state his opinion on anything. A perfect example of this is when he made a video about a game called BoxTuber on the day of the Logan and KSI match. 
And in this entire video, Corey never states who he wants or who he thinks is gonna win. And for the stubborn people in the back who are like, oh, Corey, Corey, he's black. He always picks the black guy in video games. So of course he wants KSI to win. But no, because with his amazing four time foresight, he foresaw this little detail and he decided to wear his American band handstand bandana, which just so happened to be where Logan Paul came from. This is just one example of Corey completely evading any conflict whatsoever on the internet by not even saying the smallest things about a controversy. And you have to admit that he is somewhat of a legend for this, especially in today's world where drama is favored way more over the regular content like the one that Corey is making. However, this no drama way of operating makes Corey more unknown. For example, remember earlier when I said subscribers don't really matter? Well, this is what I mean. Corey may have 10 million subscribers, but compared to channels like H3H3, Drama Alert, and Tana Monger, who have about 60% of his subscribers and get into a major drama every year, he is way less well known. But that's just my little theory, and I could be wrong. After all, Ethan has been interacting with big celebrities on his podcast, Keem has been reporting just drama for the past six years, and Tana has connects to two of the most popular YouTubers on the site. Moving past that, I could end the video right here, but there is one more concept that I want to talk about. The isolation of Corey's channel. It is baffling to me how a comedy slash gaming channel doesn't have more collabs. And it's important to specify the difference between a comedy gaming channel like Corey and a regular like strictly gaming channel like the Rad Brad. The Rad Brad's channel is like strictly about playing games and completing them, while Corey's channel is more about playing games and also mostly entertaining people. So as I said before, it's crazy to me how Corey and other channels like him haven't interacted more with each other. And don't get me wrong, he does have a bunch of friends on YouTube like Poise, JD, Mav, Tear, Ryan, Yub, and Dashi. But that sounds off when you consider that he's only formally collabed with three of these people. And I know that collab videos aren't everything, but when YouTubers do collab, it's a sign of partnership and maybe even friendship between them. I mean, Corey has literally stated in the past that Mav and Dashi are his actual, like, real life best friends. But we don't get to see that many collabs between them. And again, I know that YouTubers can be best friends and not collab. But you would think with being good friends with high sub YouTubers like Dashi and Poised, that Corey would try to start a group where all three of them share subscribers and popularity, akin to the main three members of Easy Gang, but on a much, much bigger scale. But no, Corey has never brought up this idea at all, and for most of his career, he's been just a lone wolf. Or a lone samurai. Ooh. And some people will say, wait, isn't Corey just a part of Easy Gang? Which, I mean, saying that is like saying that this boulder is a part of the rocks that are behind my house. Something just doesn't add up in those two statements. So I feel like the isolation and the no drama aspect both work in Corey's favor and his detriment. First, let's start with the cons, or the con I should say. Corey's isolation from other YouTubers and his no drama aspect doesn't allow his channel to grow to what it could be. Sure, today he has over 10 million subscribers, but I feel like that would have happened faster if he had interacted with other people more. But on the other hand, we have the pros. The first pro to what I'm now going to call the isolationism is that Corey's content barely ages. I feel like Corey's content doesn't age that much because it's not tied to any big event, drama, or controversy. Many, 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 many T slash drama slash controversy videos get immediately outdated because of a new development in that drama or controversy. And this doesn't just stop at YouTube drama, look at the countless amount of Endgame and Fortnite theory videos. All of those videos are so freaking wrong and now they have no point in existing besides collecting dust or views. Corey's videos are a different case however and I think this is evident in his videos from 2015 to 2017. As a fan of Corey Kenshin since those days, I'll tell you right now that most of those videos were not getting 2 million views and over. The reason that those videos have so many views now is because, well this should be obvious, but Corey's content doesn't age, and it isn't dated by any trendy bullcrappage. 
But wait, you said Corey's channel is a comedy channel as well, so shouldn't his old jokes be trash now? Well, no, Corey is so isolated from the goings on around him that it doesn't really matter what joke he uses as long as he uses it in a good way. And he usually does, like in this clip. Just being swagtastic in general, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Another pro that I've found about Corey's isolation is that it creates an environment where you can just sit down and watch his videos without caring what drama is going on on YouTube or what drama is going on in your personal life. And I think that's another reason why people like Corey Kenshin in general. And Corey has even stated that he wants his videos to be like you, where you can just sit down and watch them without really caring what problems are going on in your life. And I think he has succeeded at that. Put on a video. Just put it on, put on a playlist. All right. Gather your strength back. I'm here for you. But this whole isolation thing is just my little theory and it doesn't really matter. In fact, none of my opinionated statements in this video really do. And if you have a problem with any of my opinions or the way I categorize the eras, it, just remember that it, this is all my interpretation. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's enjoyment of Corey Kenshin, and whichever era you like the most, you can like that one the most. My opinions don't really matter. The only thing that really matters is that we all like Corey Kenshin and we're all samurai. And if you're still sad about Corey Kenshin retiring, as this one Juice World commenter said, don't cry because he's gone. Smile because he was here, but it's not like he's dying. So I, I don't really think you should be that sad All right, that's it for this video. It took me so long to make finally. I'm done recording this I I pray that the editing isn't that long if y'all want a secondary video of me just answering questions that y'all have or Explaining things more in depth then just comment down below about it And the video would probably come out like a month after this but with that being said hopefully you guys enjoyed Oh my god, okay be sure to, <laughs> be sure to, this is, oh my god, I cannot do this. Be sure to, this is the samurai, slice that like button for me and for Corey Kenshin because he reti he's retiring, okay? Bye. <laughs>